Greetings, Earth people. This is Jason Loveland from the J Space, and today I'm here to talk to you about the MC202, the much maligned, oft misunderstood XO Xbox. But what I'm going to show you guys in this tutorial video today is not only the basic features and programming of the machine, but also some of the tricks that I like to use. Uh, for instance, how to make it shuffle. Uh, it's actually really pretty simple, uh, but I just you just don't hear about it a lot. I think uh, I think like Tilliander and like uh, Orlando Vorn, yeah, use a similar trick, um, but don't quote me on that. So let's dive right in. Let's uh, let's just get a sequence playing. I have everything running through on DinSync through a Dofer. Um, a dope for MSY, MSY2. I strongly recommend this little uh, unit to convert between MIDI and DINSYNC. It's uh, really robust and you could drop a bomb on it. Um, so without further ado, and then it's just hooked up right now to Ableton so I can record the audio and I'm going to dub it in later. And what else? Uh, just a sound card, the Scarlet 2i4. Um, it's pretty bare bones. Um, so anyway. Actually. As you can see, the machine is just playing a basic pattern right now. Kind of sounds kind of cool and industrial. So, I'm going to hit pause. And we can begin to go over some of the features of the machine. Uh, so, most people know this, but the MC202 is basically and SH-101 without the sample and hold and noise um, grafted onto a TB-303-like sequencer um, where you can see down here it's got uh, basically um, almost, almost three full octaves of the keyboard as opposed to the 303 which <sighs> as we know, famously, only has a one-octave keyboard. Um, what's also really interesting and useful about the, the 202 is that the sequencer, unlike the 303, the sequencer will do uh, note pitch, gate on and off, and then it will also do, it has a track uh, that's specifically for gate length. So it allows you to hold the gate open really indefinitely it's and so it's not just on or off it's not just a blinking light it can have a sustain to it and that comes in handy later and I can explain more um, so the on the face of it is just the very simple controls just the you know the LFO which is quite excellent uh, VCO the mixer uh, one of my tricks and this works with the 101 too Mo all of these programming tricks work with the 101 uh, if you want bass, you just throw the throw the sub oscillator sl slider all the way to the top, and then just mix in a little bit of square and sawtooth. That's that way. I mean, it's really get some low end rumble, and then you can change the 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 tuning of the sub oscillator to make it even growlier. Um, VCF is pretty straightforward. It's got a frequency resonance envelope modulation, modulation, uh, uh, or envelope amount, modulation amount, and keyboard sensitivity amount. This basically makes it sharper and is, is similar to the sound of a cutoff mod. Just the length of this slider tells you how much 
uh, the LFO is going to modulate the, uh, the filter envelope, uh, how much the envelope is mo modulating the filter, envelopes over here, and then obviously cutoff and resonance like on every other synthesizer, and then there is a lovely uh, ADSR, so you can have a really long release or what have you. I always keep my personally my sustain down because the slider is a little finicky on my machine. Uh, and is a nice feature here, which is also on the 101, where you can have it. You can either engage the envelope, so you know attack, sustain, decay, release, whatever, or you can have it based on the gate, and the gate is determined down here in the sequencer. I'm going to put it back on envelope. A couple other little things, um, tuning knob, very helpful uh, for doing like on the fly pitch modulation, anything like that. Portamento, the Portamento on this thing is really, really excellent like it is on the 101. The other exciting thing about the Portamento is that it will transmit over uh, control voltage. So you can say send it to a modified TB303 or something like that and I will show you some of those tricks. Tempo knob, very simple. Accent, so instead of uh, the, well this is actually basically identical-ish to the TB303's accent knob volume. So what I really wanted to make this about was not so much the sounds, but really how to program the 202. There's a couple other videos on YouTube, but I don't think that any of them are quite satisfactory. And they, and as far as I know, none of them explain the significance of the number 192. So the entire MC202 sequencer is built around the number 192. Why is that? Well, 192 is divisible by 3 and 4. So you can do multiple different time signatures that way. Um, it also is divided by any multiple of 4 or any multiple of 3 up until a certain point. So it allows you uh, a real range in notes and uh, timings and things like that. So whenever you're whenever you just boot up the machine, remember there is no memory except there is a uh, tape output on the back. Uh, every time you hit a key, it's stored in the memory. Uh, that's a volatile memory that disappears when the power is turned off. So if I were to say hit play now, yes, all the notes that I put in are there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the machine and just wipe it. Uh, I want to do kind of, let's see, let's go for a kind of like industrial 8th step, 8th, 16th note, uh, kind of liaisons, kind of bass line. So just, then you could just tap in the pitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then once you're done entering the pitches, hit play. And then in order to uh, engage the looping function on the sequencer, you have to, and uh, now I can't do this because I'm holding the camera. Uh, you hold shift and the cycle button. So there you go. And then the little, you can see the little light there is up or, or the little LED is flashing. So now we can listen to it. All right, it sounds promising, but it sounds like it's eighth notes, not 16th notes. So what we want to do is go to edit, hit edit twice to go into step mode. Uh, you'll see, you get a little indicator here to tell you what, what you're actually programming. So when you hit play, it just says it's in play mode. You see that little guy? And then if you hit edit, it goes into pitch mode where you can then adjust some of the note timings, overwrite and whatnot notes. And then if you hit edit again, you can go into the step right mode. And yes, you can see here 24. Remember, 24 divided by 8 is 192. Freaky. 
Um, so one of the, the, the nice thing about the keyboard is it's laid out with some of the uh, more conventional music uh, uh, notation. So it's like you have everything from a whole note here to a 32nd note tie here. Um, but then there's also this kind of mysterious little keypad that I'll explain in a little bit. So right now it's playing eighth notes, so let's add sixteenth notes. So you just hit for every every pitch you just reassign a um, a uh, a note a note duration. So and then hit enter. So sixteenth note you can see it changes to twelve there. Enter. 16th note, enter, 16th note, enter, 16th note, enter. So, and then when you're, when, once those are all in, you just hit play again. There we go. Anyway, um, so that's the very, very, very most basic uh, thing you could do. If you want to change some of the note durations around, go back to edit. So let's say, let's add, a, let's start with a quarter note and then do sixteenths. Uh, I'm going to do eighth. There we go, let's try that. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. So, what if I want to do like a uh, really long sustained notes well then you go into the gate so you hit enter you hit edit three times now so now it says gate and the first one it defaults to it's usually the gate time defaults to 50 percent of whatever the note durations value is so this is a quarter note uh, and it's showing a duration of an eighth note, but let's crank that up. Let's let's do uh, uh, forty-eight. So you can either hit uh, the you, you have to type it in here. So four eight, and there you go. And then I'm gonna add. I'm gonna make this twenty-four. Well, let's see how that sounds. Wait, I don't hear any difference. You have to switch this to gate mode. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, this uh, this machine is really a bass monster and it can get real freaky real fast. So what I want to show you guys uh, how to do is uh, to make it shuffle like uh, like a 909 or uh, an MPC or, or other things like that. So what a shuffle pattern is, is uh, the downbeats usually on the one are on beat and then the ones and then the upbeats are usually uh, delayed or sped up by some amount. This gets really confusing and generally the 202 is somewhat confusing. That's why I always have a notebook with me. Um, so here we have 192, 16th notes, and what this is going to let you do is, if you notice here, on an ordinary sequence, if we did 12 or um, 16 16th notes, so you'd have, and each one has a note value of 12, it would just be 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 all the way down. But with a shuffle, 
you can do you can either add, you can start to add and subtract add and subtract and normally I only do the shuffle between two notes you can do it between three and four if you want to get all steely Dan on it um, so 12 and 12 adds up to 24 so you could do 14 10 16 8 um, you know 24 uh, you have to kind of play around with it to get a sense of what you like I generally like around the 14 10 area which is nice for a bass line, just a gentle shuffle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the 202. And I'm going to put in 16 16th notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So hit play cycle there we go and then I'm gonna put in 16 of those guys so programming can be a little tedious if you're not keeping notes the whole idea behind these sequencers was uh, it was for transposing uh, uh, you were supposed to have music written out and then you could very simply edit them and uh, plug in the information like you would do it off your, if you were reading it off a spreadsheet or something like that. Uh, my friend Shingo, who's Japanese, remembers uh, programming uh, 202s in his music appreciation class, and they would program them with patriotic songs. And when he found out that I was using one to make lots of, lots of music and especially weird psychedelic stuff, he was pretty shocked and amazed and delighted. So here's what that pattern just sounds like normally, 16th, 16th notes. Enter 14, 10, 14, 10, 14, 10, 14, 10, 14. 10, 14, uh, 10, there we go, so now if we listen to it, it should shuffle slightly, there we go, so that's the Part one of this tutorial is just a brief introduction to the machine and programming. And the next video, I'm going to do more uh, detailed uh, breakdowns of some of the sequencer functions, as well as uh, beginning to use the 202 with control voltage uh, to control another synthesizer. And uh, we can take it from there. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know. And I'll try to address them in the next clip. Um, also, I want to do some graphics and make the little readout a little more clear here because it's not very clear right now. But anyway, I'll get there. Uh, hopefully by the time this is up, it'll all be on there. And uh, until next time, cheers from the J-Space. Fire with people.